my favorite slides, and I like to talk to patients about it. Um, we look at vitamin K2 as protein activation. And these very important proteins that K2 activate, they're K2 dependent proteins that we activate, are called osteocalcin and the matrix GLA protein or GLA protein. So I actually like to talk about the matrix GLA protein first. And what it does is it defers calcium from actually building up in the arterial walls. So it decreases that calcification in the vasculature. And that's very important for us as we age, we are looking at that cardiovascular health and uh, making sure that we have a decrease of arterial stiffness and lack of plaquing. So that's something that we're really looking for to um, provide that K2 to inhibit that process. The second thing is the osteocalcin activation. And the calcium actually promotes bone mineral deposition of that calcium. So without K2, we don't have the ability to uh, mineralize our bones as much. It promotes that bone, uh, bone growth. So like all good things, we tell you all the great things about our vitamin K, but we're also going to tell you why we're potentially deficient in it. So vitamin K1, is typically used in the liver for blood coagulation, and vitamin K2 is used extrahepatically. It has a longer half-life. It's part of the menaquinones versus the phylaquinones. And so the K2 that we use is typically uh, in the form of menaquinone 7. So the half-life, again, is greater, and it, it activates those proteins for us in the, in the blood and for the bone. Um, we can actually find enough K1 in our diet on a regular basis from green leafy vegetables. I'll bet you need to eat several cups of them, it's about 200 grams of green leafy vegetables, and quite honestly, not everyone has that, uh, that, that diet. We, we tend to have a little bit more of that standard American diet here in the US. Um, as far as K2, it's a little more difficult to, uh, to, to utilize the, the K from our food. One of the main sources is called uh, natto, and it's a fermented soybean. It has this kind of sticky appearance from the fermentation. And that vitamin K, too, um, you know, obviously, most people aren't going to be consuming natto. Um, it's very common, more so in a region in Japan. Um, in the U.S., we may not have the um, palatability of that. So um, some people have talked to me about the, you know, aged cheese is kind of like maybe a little um, odorific for some people, a little strong. Natto is very similar. So that brings us to the fact that we have a vitamin K deficiency. And it's actually been shown in some surveys that up to 97% of people in the Western population have a K2 deficiency. And we're really not getting it from our food, obviously. So that's something that we are recommending having to do some supplementation with. Because the only other way, I was uh, listening to Dr. Scherger speak a couple weeks ago in Dallas at the A4M, and he was saying, the only other way for you to consume K2 would to be your, uh, to eat your own feces. And he showed a picture of a, a monkey up there, so it was kind of entertaining. <laughs> so MenaQ7 is vitamin K2, uh, has over 20 human clinical studies that validate it. We use our own MenaQ7 raw material. And as you can see, there's several different areas that we've done research with healthy populations, of course, bone and joint health. Um, then we've actually done some discoveries in kidney health, um, as well as then, of course, looking at the optimal bioavailability. And all of these studies are available for you on the MenaQ7 website. Okay, so we're gonna go through a couple of the main MetaQ7 bone health studies for you. So we actually uh, found that 180 micrograms was the dose for adults that was the most appropriate per day to statistically significantly slow the uh, progression of bone loss, basically. So we're looking at you know going from uh, osteopenia to osteoporosis, and we're trying to decrease that progression. And we're looking at bone strength, and we're looking at compression strength of the bone as well. This was actually the first long-term 
intervention with MK7 um, for supplements for bone health as a three-year study. So these graphs, if you take a look at the blue squares, that's showing you the uh, increase of strength and compression of the bone. And the, against the placebo, which is the green dots, as you see. Um, and after three months of taking MediQ7, we actually show significant improvement of uh, the activation of the osteocalcin. So just three months will show you that. But again, this study was done for up to three years. And as you take it longer, you actually get a, a better outcome. So that was our bone support. I'm also gonna to talk to you about the cardiovascular support. So vascular calcification, as we know in the US, um, cardiovascular disease is the most common cause of death in the Western world. So this is something obviously that we wanna do something about and make sure that we can take care of and manage. Excess calcium can build into the vascular walls, uh, vascular walls causing arterial stiffness, then that arterial calcification, and then of course, atherosclerosis. So as that happens, your, your arteries stiffen, it puts a greater workload on your heart. And so that in and of itself is not great. Blood pressure rises, all sorts of things happen and people get stressed out and maybe a little angry like they have blood sugar issues. Um, <laughs> not related, but you get the idea of the symptoms. So along that, the Plaquing can cause constriction, and that constriction can decrease the ability of our body to get blood, oxygen, and nutrients to the tissues. So obviously, we're looking at this as a problem, as well as the fact that it can lead to uh, myocardial infarction. So the heart studies that we did with MediQ7, one of them was a three-year study that showed that supplementing with vitamin K2 decreased that arterial stiffness significantly. And as you see on the right, it actually increased the arterial flexibility, whereas the placebo group decreased, um, or, or the, the, uh, the flexibility wasn't there, and they started having more stiffness, actually. And this was done, again, at that study dose at 180 micrograms per day. So one way that we measure the stiffness of arteries is through this carotid femoral pulse wave velocity. And what we did was we did a one-year and a three-year study, um, again, with menaquinone uh, 7, as menaq 7 for your vitamin K supplementation. And it actually stopped the progression of that arterial stiffness per that test that we were doing. Um, and as you can see, the placebo, the, the dotted lines are a little hard to see on the graph, but the placebo group actually continued into their arterial stiffness, which is um, something, again, that we need to really consider and, and take, it, uh, take seriously. The three-year group, as you can see in the green dots on the bottom of the graph, um, it actually reversed that stiffness. We really want people to understand that this is something that could be, I don't want to say a solution, but this is something that people should really take into consideration as they're, as they're aging. 